I'm one of the solar pioneers in McKinsey. Um, a lot of people, when I got involved in this, looked at me and said, like, why do you want to do solar? That's by far too much of a niche opportunity. And I can tell you, one and a half years later, a lot of my colleagues um, are trying to get involved on, uh, on our solar work. Um, I lead our global solar initiative around uh, knowledge development, and I probably dedicate 80, 90% uh, of my time now with solar companies. But my original background is actually working with utilities and power infrastructure companies on the generation side as well as on the transmission and distribution side. So when I look at solar opportunities, I tend to look at it more from a power market perspective, actually very similar to how, uh, how Julie described it. I thought it might be, um, I thought it might be interesting to uh, kind of like recap some of the themes that we've seen in the last uh, 12 months and the, the logos of some of the players here by no means uh, attempted to be uh, exhaustive. But you know, what are some of the themes that we've seen? I think we talked a little bit this morning about uh, the significant capacity expansion we're still seeing in the industry. And by the way, not only on the, on the cell and, and, and module side, but even on, on the silicon um, capacity, uh, you know, 2012, 2015, uh, that far out. There's still quite a bit of demand there. I think the, uh, the second theme that I thought was interesting last year is that some of uh, the major technology players are actually developing downstream capabilities as well, which tells you a little bit how they uh, think about the demand supply situation. Obviously, sun power with power light, um, but also first sort of about DT uh, solar and then QCells building QCells International internally a, uh, a downstream business. But probably most importantly, I would actually highlight some of the, um, you know, the utility work. Um, a year ago, you know, I would try to like sneak two or three pages into a discussion with utility executives and get them excited about solar, and um, they would usually stare at you. Six months ago, they would start listening, and I would say, today they're actually pretty sophisticated and smart around solar power. This is a page that I probably don't show, ha have to show you guys, but I always like to show it um, to our utilities and, and those players who are not yet in solar um, and, and who look at solar as a niche opportunity. Um, on the left side, you nicely see how the solar index has outperformed the energy index and the S&P 500. On the right side, uh, you see some of the market capitalization of, uh, of the leading solar players. And what's embedded in, the, in those share prices are actually quite um, ambitious growth expectation. And that is something that um, I like to talk a little bit about uh, today. Um, I know you're all waiting to kind of like hear our perspective on demand and where it could be. Um, but before doing that, um, I want to talk about the drivers that uh, will determine demand. And I think an understanding of those drivers will be important um, to pick the right markets, to pick the right customers. So the first one is I want to talk briefly about the decline in solar cost. Um, I want to talk about um, the power markets and um, how high commodity prices lead to high power prices, and then briefly talk a little bit about um, you know, a fundamental shift in mindset um, towards the environment we're seeing. And I know we talked a little bit about, uh, quite a bit about policy programs so far, but um, I want to add a few other points there. So what we've done about a year ago, we brought our high-tech um, experts together with um, our operations practice and some of our power guys, and we did a bottoms-up assessment of the different um, cost technologies, the, ma the major PV technologies. And um, on the next page, you, you see um, kind of like um, our perspective on the cost reduction. Um, now, the first thing I want to say, the green color is actually, um, uh, they are both applications to California. The green color is um, a residential rooftop application for wafer-based PV, and on the right side, um, a large solar farm for thin film. Um, I don't mean to imply that um, each technology fits into uh, that application. We've actually done some crossover um, comparison between cadmium telluride and crystal silicon, and it's actually quite interesting to see that um, both technology lend themselves to cadmium telluride on the, um, on the uh, rooftop application as well as uh, the crystal silicon on the large solar farms. But you know, the common theme here is that we believe there's significant um, cost reduction potential um, on, for, for, for both type of technologies. We see three major drivers. Um, I think Jigger had a, had a you know, similar slide that, that groups them similarly. Um, technology evolution, efficiency improvement, thinner wafers, those kind of things. On the manufacturing improvement, this is where really, we really see a lot of the lean manufacturing principles um, entering the manufacturing lines. 
Um, and obviously, scale uh, will play a major part too. But then, you know, the other one is the margin construction, um, which is part of the oversupply that we've been talking about all day here, but also part of the increased competition. And that's probably one thing that um, surprised me most when I started looking into this, how much margin is actually um, in the system. So how, how is it going to affect um, prices? And I'm not going to stand here and dare to give you a price projection. It was interesting. I spoke with Jigga after lunch. He's pointed out that you know, he hasn't really seen that. Um, you know, module suppliers are offering lower, um, lower price modules. Um, obviously, um, I think there's a lot of kind of like hope out in the industry that demand will be significantly higher than what people say. But I do think um, we would expect the second half of 2009 as early as that that we see prices coming down. I'm uh, currently working with, uh, with a non-solar player in developing um, large solar farms and the concept of large solar farms, um, multiple hundred megawatts. And um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what kind of conversation you can have when you offer a large pipeline uh, between 2009 and 2012. So if you send me an email in three months, I, I can probably give you some perspective there. The other thing I wanted, the second drive I want to talk about is a little bit the, the power markets and build a little bit on what, um, what Jigger and Julie were already talking about. And there are, there are three themes here. The first one is that um, nobody is really building traditional power um, generation capacity right now. A lot of plants get canceled or delayed. Um, secondly, if they do get built, they're actually much more expensive now to construct. And then thirdly, when you have them constructed, when they're in operations, um, the fuel price is uh, skyrocketing. So what you see on this page is, um, this is a US picture. You, you see some of the uh, coal-fired capacity that has been canceled uh, over the last eight years. In total, 46 gigawatt. TXU canceled eight out of 11 coal plants, 2007. That amounted to six gigawatt. Six gigawatt is about 10% in a very isolated power market air court where our reserve margins are very tight. Um, not many people talked about the price implication it will have on the market over the next two to five years. 